Hey folks, taking a break. I've been working on my Let's Play, but it's been a while since I've done a tutorial, and I think I can help with an issue. See these beautiful blocks behind me? These gorgeous blocks that are coming up in 1.112? Glazed terracotta. Gorgeous. Colorful. Bright. But... People have been saying that they're a little overwhelmed by them, not sure how to build with them. And that's my plan, to give some building ideas, inspiration, to, to show you how you might use these blocks. I'm going to start out with a small introduction. Uh, then I'm going to introduce you to some various architectural, artistic styles that work well with pattern tile, such as what we see behind us, and uh, give a few build examples of that. And then uh, I have some other uh, sort of decorative uses for the tiles that I'm going to show you uh, what you could do. So let's get to it. Let's start using these beautiful, beautiful blocks because 1.12 is dropping soon. So these blocks, let me do some fancy sides side scrolling. Uh, let's think of a different way to think of them rather than, oh good lord, I have no idea what to do with these. Oh my god, they're so bright. What am I going to do with this thing? Oh, oh. Instead of that, let's think of them, I have a forward description for you. Let's think of them as vibrant, patterned, directional blocks. That is my definition for these new building options. And what it means is <laughs> that if you use these, you might be building ugly, but you're never going to be building boring. I mean, these are going to jazz things up. It might not be perfect, but it's going to jazz things up. Jens, uh, the Minecraft developer, said in a tweet that his inspiration for these blocks was a uh, Moroccan floor tile design <laughs> in a California hotel. Okay, first off, how do you make glazed terracotta in Minecraft? Well, you find yourself some clay. Where do you find clay? Uh, you can go to a Mesa biome. Uh, Desert Temple has a couple blocks of hardened clay. Or you can make it yourself. It's kind of a double, kind of. It is a double smelting uh, uh, process. So. You has a your clay. You smelt that clay. Now, the terracotta that you get from smelting clay is sort of that traditional red color that you see in like uh, southwestern um, buildings. Beautiful, beautiful color. But we want more colors. There's 16 options. So what you do is, once you have a pile of terracotta, whoop, you get whatever dye you're going to use and use it. Now, once you do that, you smelt to get your glazed terracotta, that colored terracotta. And then, to what to your wondering eyes appears, but some really fancy dancy blocks. Okay, first things in terms of building that you need to realize about these uh, uh, glazed terracotta is that they are directional. If I face this way and put a block down, see the, how the pattern lands? But if I face, oh, let's say this way, see the pattern lands in a different way. It rotates itself depending on which direction I'm standing. See, different direction. And uh, that rotation is uh, clearly based on the direction. So if you're facing north, south, west, east, you're going to get the block to land on the ground or, or rotate wherever you put it uh, in a different direction, uh, which means that you can use these blocks to create patterns. So you don't just have to use them individually. You can think about, well, let me put these together and create what looks to me like a slice of line. These, these patterns that you see in a two by two block, uh, where it creates a definite sort of um, 
central design in the middle here. These are known as, um, uh, per the Wikipedia, uh, the, the singular designs uh, or the singular patterns. Now, there's two for each type or colored uh, version of terracotta. Now, does that mean that that's all the designs that you can get? No, Surrey Bob. Here's why. Those are the singular patterns right there. But anytime you lay a block down, let's see. Let's rotate these. Okay. See these three? Whoop. See these three blocks here? I put them all down in the same direction. Now, if I rotate this differently, every time you do that, let's do this way. So there's, um, which way did I go this time? Let's go this way. Each block has four different positions in relationship to these other blocks, which means that like this block in relationship to this block is four by four variations. Now, let me interject here. <laughs> Math is not my so strong point. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. Uh, I've made patterns going outward. All this to say that if my math is slightly wrong, the general idea is right, which is there is a pile of patterns that you can make. All right, but let me go back to my math, which I'm thinking is right. If it's not, let me know. I'll update it in the uh, description. So here we have, uh, uh, where was where was I? Okay. Okay, so this block here that I'm pointing at has four different positions it could be in. This block has four different positions it could be in. When you put the two together, that means four times four, you know, four different combinations of the very ori various orientations that these blocks can be in, which means 16 different ways that these two blocks could be oriented near each other. Then this block has four different orientations. I believe that means that 16 times four, <laughs> okay, that means I believe 64 different variations. You put this one in, then you have whatever four times 64 is. Now, here's where I did ask a math person. Um, if you take out mirroring and duplication, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we can see how good I am at math. What it means is, I believe, that you have at least 64 patterns that you can make with just these four blocks. Again, if I'm wrong, update me, but the general idea is right. It may be 32. It may be more than 64. It's a pile of patterns that you can make. But remember, there's only the two what I guess are being called singular patterns, where you make this sort of central uh, design doesn't mean that that's all the patterns. And if you start expanding these out, making larger uh, variations of that same pattern, well, yeah, it's going to start to do some interesting things as you build the pattern out. You may not have that singular, um, you know, central pattern in the middle of four blocks, but you're, you're getting some interesting things happening as you build out these patterns. All right, and that's the same for each. There you go. There's an interesting little pattern, and that's just from one variation of one block, and that can keep happening. I hope that made sense. I think the building uh, uh, section is going to be a little easier to explain, but what this means is a pile of possibilities in terms of variations of, of pattern. If you're building in Minecraft, you have, the build styles have tended, not absolutely, everybody can find variations, but have tended towards uh, mid-century modern, uh, medieval-esque, and I guess what you would call Victorian-esque. These builds are great. I love these builds. I could look at those kind of builds all day long. But what these new blocks allow for are build styles that um, build styles that have incorporated uh, uh, 
tile work and pattern, intense pattern. The first architectural example we're going to use is something called Moorish. Moorish architecture or Islamic architecture. Now, you could probably get someone who was, here I'm going to take my thing out of it, who was an expert who could explain the details of this better. But Moorish architecture, oh, first I should say that this build is, a, is an exact copy, almost an exact copy, of a Reddit post uh, that a, a Minecrafter called Garmonica put up. Uh, and he or she had used a Moorish gate as a reference. I thought that this design was so gorgeous that I tried to replicate it. I think I did a pretty good job. I'll put the picture of what they had posted up. Uh, although they went into more detail in making patterns with the um, with the tile here. Uh, but anyway, so Moorish architecture. If you're going to do these kinds of builds, I wrote up a few. Uh, known for using arches, uh, for repeated patterns. What we do we mean by repeated patterns? What lends itself to repeated patterns? Ooh, tiles. Tiles. Glazed terracotta definitely lends itself. Tile work. Vegetative motifs. Now, what does that mean? It means um, designs that look like they have vines going through them or flowers going through them. Calligraphy. Now, none of these patterns necessarily look, you know, are writing, but they can kind of look sort of like you've got calligraphy going. So, uh, Moorish, Islamic architecture, oh, you're going to find a lot of build inspiration there. I'm going to put up a couple photos. And, uh, and this is kind of a fresh building style for Minecraft, I think. Not that common. The next architectural style that looks kind of similar to the Moorish uh, Islamic style is something, let's call it um, Spanish... I put Mediterranean here, but let's call it Spanish Southwestern architecture. Um, this style, like the Moorish, depends on uh, curves and arches. Usually, um, uh, have they built in areas where there's a lot of sandstone and sand, so uh, white stucco is used, sandstone is used. Definitely use painted tile, uh, terracotta roofs, that sort of classic terracotta color, the red uh, color. Um, balconies, uh, ironwork is used a lot in these builds. And I did not a copy of a Redditor's build, but what, something that I would say was a riff on another Redditor's build. Uh, this is um, based off of something made by Keyboard Smash. I'll put a picture up in the corner. And um, I think this is a really good example of a Spanish or Southwestern build. You've got the tile work going, you've got the terracotta colors, um, you have, here, let's, where did I put the stairs? I put the stairs here. Balcony, definite style, terracotta roof and sort of different from what you're used to seeing in Minecraft. The next style. Based off an architect whose last name, oh, forgive me, is Hundert Wasser. <laughs> he made some fun building. Uh, he tended to work against straight lines. He liked to integrate natural features like um, trees and stones, you know, sort of looking almost like they were built into the building. Um, uneven features, meaning, you know, windows wouldn't necessarily be all on the same line. Um, the windows were usually unique shapes. They didn't all look the same. Uh, colorful and mismatched tile and stone. And uh, yeah, this here, I wrote that out here, but I just read it too. So here's, I'll put up the reference pic that I used, but here's my sort of riff on that picture. I made it. It's not a huge apartment building. All right. Ooh, let me in. Gosh darn it. 
All right, so I tried to work against straight lines. I tried to do that with the pattern, also with the building. I made my windows some interesting shapes. I tried to kind of recreate the um, uh, the design he, he had on top of the building. How would you describe that sort of rounded uh, gold topped thing? I don't know if it works, but you know what? It acts as a sort of beacon lighthouse kind of thing, and uh, I dig it. Next style. Might even be a little more intense than that last style. And I am calling this uh, one that's based off a uh, psychedelic art uh, or an Alice in Wonderland kind of uh, building style. And uh, again, links will be below. But this style of art here, I don't think I need to push any buttons. This kind of art um, loves to mess with a uh, fantastic or surreal kind of subject matter. Um, they make these sort of kaleidoscope um, paisley patterns, love bright and highly contrasting colors, really intense depth of detail, which these um, uh, uh, blocks really lend themselves to, and a morphing style, meaning things will look like they are one thing and then they kind of morph into another. And that's, I, again, you may hate this, I, I don't, I kind of dig it. At first I was like, wow, this may qualify as ugly rather than well done, but it's not boring. And I'm, I think I sort of got the morphine thing down. So it's a rabbit. We got, come on, you can fly. Uh, it's a rabbit, but it's also sort of morphing into the sort of spiraling pattern. It's a rabbit because it has a white tail. Come on. I uh, put the beds up here, but you know, you can go into the guts. Uh, I sort of meant these are the doors. Just meant to keep out some creatures. Not going to keep out a baby zombie. Um, yes, I meant that to be the guts. And then the pink is the tongue. Yeah. It would work. It would be, it would definitely stand out as a house. Okay. Now, uh, this next section, over here, I was trying to show you how to use sort of historical or artistic inspiration, uh, you know, pulling from what's already been built. Here, I'm going to show you what I think one could do with sort of just a standard Minecraft house build, but uh, using these new really pattern colorful blocks. Now, this is sort of your standard house build. You know, four walls, kind of a standard roof, but I've used some color. I've used the pattern. I think, I think it looks kind of cool. You know, you are not living in a boring house here. Uh, I don't, I tried in this one to kind of throw in some uh, complementary colors. Blue and orange are complementary and work pretty well together. And I think that's a sweet sort of standard little house. But with a pop, no one's going to lose you in the village. They'll know exactly where you live. I did a couple other different palettes, not necessarily full houses though. So here's one with uh, uh, the purple uh, bricks, the pattern, and uh, yeah, definitely different from that. And pretty darn nice. This one is more of a standard house. I, I have to admit, I really like the color combinations here with the jungle wood and dark oak. And uh, again, sort of a simple build, standard house, but the patterns really make it pop. Next section. Now, that was sort of a standard um, uh, house build. Let's look at popping up your standard evil build. All right. Everybody needs an evil tower an evil mage's tower in their build. But this is an evil mage, wizard, whatever, with some style. 
kicks it out a little bit. Anyway, I think this works pretty nice. Liking it, liking it. Also, I'm so right now going to do a plug for another tutorial I did. I, uh, I have a fairly popular tutorial that I did on making um, domes and arches and how to build them. I'll put a link down below. Uh, but yeah, that'll help you with this kind of thing. But in terms of my fashionable dark mage tower build, I kind of dig this. And I admire... I admired his or her style. Next section is going to be um, not necessarily buildings, but decorative accents or ways to use the blocks um, that are not, not, not necessarily a, a building. So you could use these blocks to make some interesting looking trees. If you got a role play thing going on or if you've just got sort of an interesting build these could work these could definitely work another option is to use um, some uh, use the blocks underwater as sort of um, what would you say this looks like you can use them as a tile build right and I think it works really well like that's just gorgeous and something you've seen in real life um, but I think you can also use these blocks to sort of imitate maybe that this is flowing water it kinda looks like flowing water it looks maybe like um, the pebbles that would be in the ground underneath the water but it adds some texture and detail to um, to builds that you're doing that that are working with water Gosh, I like both of these a lot. Anyway, uh, their uses are directional uses. Now, this would be a very expensive way of making sure one didn't get lost while caving. But, uh, yeah, which way is out? Why, this way is clearly out. Um, in terms of direction, you could also definitely use these blocks as signs. Which way to the village? Uh, that way to the village. Um, not just a sign, but sort of a guided pathway. Which way should I be going? Oh, I should definitely be going uh, this way. Uh, but although the arrow blocks are clearly have great uses for pointing one in the right direction, there's some other blocks that I think you could use as signs, like this one with the creeper face. I think this could definitely indicate, hey, you know what's up ahead? Danger is up ahead. Or you have this sort of pickaxe one. This could say, we got a mining area up ahead. This could say, mm, this way to the flower farm. Uh, this one could say, uh, up ahead we have a juice bar. Uh, but you see what I mean. You could, you could use them as signs. And... I think this comes to mind already for most people, but oh, they make some good flooring. They make some good tile work or rugs. Uh, I threw in some diorite here because I think diorite doesn't get a lot of love, but that works really well with that pattern design. That's a nice rug. I'd use it in my house. Uh, this idea comes from um, uh, Good Times with Scar. I've got a link to his video down below, but beds uh, really makes nice beds. His video too has a, a lot of other ideas for ways to use these blocks in interior design. But wow, I thought these beds were cute, very cute. Uh, another way you could use them is as a wall decoration. You know, you got you got a plain wall going. That's a pop right there. That looks cool. Um, you can indent it for a different sort of depth and texture. Uh, kind of looks like a painting there. That was, uh, I believe, a suggestion also uh, that um, Good Times with Scar gave in his video that these can look like paintings. They can also just look like uh, wallpaper or, or, or a wall accent or tile work. All right, so I hope that this 
gave some ideas, gave some inspiration, um, made you feel perhaps like, hey, I could build with these. I could build with these and it's going to be bright, it's going to be colorful, it's going to be interesting, and uh, it is certainly not going to be dull. I mean, these are some colorful builds and they look, they look pretty cool. They look pretty cool. This one particularly. Golly, that guy. Or girl. Whoever. Whoever. Great. Great build right there. And it's going to allow us to build out of sort of the standard Minecraft, you know, default. Hey, I'm going to do medieval. Hey, I'm going to do mid-century modern. Yeah. Uh, mess it up a bit. Do other things. Go a little nutty. Why not?